and it's blue. So how are you? I hope you're doing amazing. If you're new here, hi, my name is Orla. I'm a really big fan of BTS, K-pop, and other fan culture. I also have an English degree, and BTS make a lot of literary references in their music and in their music videos. And so yesterday, I got two new books in the post. People have been asking where I get my books. I get realistically all my books from bookdepository.com. Uh, it's a great website. The ones that I got were Kafka on the Shore by Haruki Murakami and I also got, I had to ask people on Instagram how this is pronounced. I think it's Damien. I thought it was Demian or Demian, but I think Damien. Now recently I've been watching a lot of like book vlogs, like reading vlogs, and I have convinced myself that I'm going to be able to read this in a day. It does have small writing and usually small writing makes me bleh, but... I really think that I can get through this in the day, so I'm gonna take you along with me as I read this. I've already read the prologue this morning while I was drinking my hot water, lemon, orange, and honey. Um, the prologue kind of gave me a sense of him kind of believing that he like, had to write this, if you get what I mean. Like it was kind of a, a compelling feeling, like this was something that he had to write. And kind of also, notes of self-identity and no one really being their true self and that's only in the prologue which is only like two pages long yeah this is doable so i'm going to take you along with me as i read this book um i'll drop in in places where i think it's necessary i'm hoping to read this today maybe do an analysis of it this evening if i get it done and then kind of see how this connects with blood sweat and tears because this book is said to be very important in Blood, Sweat and Tears, both in the song, I think, and the music video. And I love the music video, Blood, Sweat and Tears is what made me a BTS fan because like, I was like liking them and then Blood, Sweat and Tears happened and I was like, Mwah. Mwah. Okay, so I think it's about an hour and a half later and I just finished chapter two and I also took a break to have some lunch and I watched the Blood, Sweat and Tears music video while I was doing that because I just wanted it fresh in my mind. And at the end of chapter two, there was a quote that I think BTS paraphrased in the music video. It's this, but it's paraphrased into something a little bit more condensed. As it was, I was clinging with all my roots to my former earthly paradise. I had returned home and had been accepted in grace. But it was not Damien's world, nor was he suited to it. He too, though in a different way from Cromer, was a tempter. And moreover, my link with the second evil world, with which I never wanted to have anything more to do. That is very, very similar to that break in the Blood, Sweat and Tears music video. Uh, Namjoon is saying it. He too was a tempter. The evil world with which I no longer wanted to have anything to do with something like that. I'm paraphrasing it as well. He too was a tempter. He too was a link to the second. The evil world with which I no longer wanted to have anything to do. Basically, it's just Cromer is a few years older than him and is using kind of intimidation tactics and kind of holding information over him and threatening him. Cromer will make him do bad things and he'll feel bad about it. Damien will more make him think bad things but feel kind of okay or good about it, you know? Just adding here later on, when I say bad things, I kind of mean like think bad things societally speaking, particularly surrounding religion. I think whether they're bad or not is up to you but I'm still not sure because I'm still not finished it. He talks about having dreams of them both torturing him and with Cromer, it's like real torture and he's like terrified and he's terrified that he's going to hurt somebody. But with Damien, it's more like he's torturing him, but he's quite okay to accept the torture. Oh, my bookmark. So, so far, it's just really set up this foundation for the two worlds, the, you know, the safe world, the light world, the positive world, the more picture perfect world, and then the more dark world, the more dangerous world, the more temptation filled world. I'm not yet sure because he is so young as a narrator if he's a reliable narrator. I think I got something in my eye. It's not functioning very well right now but I'm up to chapter four. I think there are eight chapters in total so halfway through. I might have been a little bit too ballsy. I'm not fully halfway through. I'm like 
a third of the way through, I'd say, more like. I think I was a bit ballsy in thinking, I think I was a bit ballsy in thinking that I could get this done in a day, but I do think that I can get it done in two days. It's the next day. I read two more chapters of this last night since I left you. I think my thoughts are becoming a bit more cohesive, and I was looking at, what was that? I think it was a bird. Yeah, I think my thoughts are becoming a little bit more cohesive on the book and I was looking at the lyrics last night as well trying to think and I was like oh yeah 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 no I can definitely see how this book connects with the song like in BTS's fashion they don't just regurgitate this they're doing it in their own style they're doing it in their own way and yeah I'd say I have like a third of the book left maybe less maybe like a quarter of the book left so hopefully I'll get it done today I wasn't filming. I'm <laughs> I'm one chapter and less than 10 pages away from the end. And I just don't know what's going to happen. Like I have no clue what's going to happen. No, uh, like I, I understand what's going on. I understand what's happening, but I just don't know what conclusion is going to be. So yeah, that's where I'm at. Uh, I just finished it. Still a little confused. I need to digest. Okay, can I just say that if it wasn't for the fact that I was reading this for BTS, I would never have picked up this book and read it. And if I did pick it up and read it, I probably wouldn't have finished it. But I'm glad that I did. I'm just gonna put it in here before we get into this. Uh, I am going to be really giving spoilers in this, unlike how I did in Into the Magic Shop. I still think you can read it even with me giving you the spoilers because there's so much in it that if you wanted to read it and kind of um tick 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 away through it but I do think that a lot of people might not read this book and so that's why I think that giving spoilers isn't necessarily a bad thing and I'm just telling you here spoilers I'm also really really glad that I took down some notes every chapter while I was reading it because if I didn't I feel like I would have missed out on a lot so Blood, Sweat and Tears, I, I mentioned this earlier, Blood, Sweat and Tears was one of the first songs that got me into BTS. It was also the first song that I genuinely looked at the lyrics and had a little analysis. So I knew that there was this idea of temptation in the song. And so that's kind of what was my idea going into the book. But I kind of had no idea what it was going to be about because I didn't even read the blurb. I think what I want to do is I want to go through the book with you first and then go through the lyrics with you. So I recently went through Into the Magic Shop with you and that was a book where I was telling you everybody needs to go out and read this, it's an amazing book. I don't think that everybody needs to go out and read this book unless it's something that you want to do yourself. It's not something that will get you into reading, it's not, well it might, I don't know. Um, it's not an easy read. So if you, you find that kind of difficult it's probably not for you okay first of all i think that the chapter names were quite important so it was eight chapters and they all had names i think the chapter names were quite important to the story and i'm also really glad that like <laughs> i grew up and went to catholic schools because i knew all the the the, the 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 biblical references Bib biblical references bless you so the first chapter is called two worlds and you're kind of getting this basis of the fact that there are two worlds in Emil Sinclair, that is the narrator, in his mind there are two worlds. There's the world of light and good and there is the world of dark and bad. That's kind of it in its simplest terms. But what I did think was really, really interesting was it almost felt like unrealistic, like it felt like there was literally a line and the line existed and there was good this side and there was bad this side and you did not cross the line you were either the good or you were the bad there was no in between so in the first chapter he gets caught up with this boy who's a little bit older cromer who's from the bad side and because sinclair feels like he has to impress him he basically says i stole some apples and cromer basically uses this to try get money out of him to kind of torment him and this tormenting goes on for a very very long time what does interest me is like his fear of 
being perceived as bad was so intense that he was willing to do kind of bad things to make sure no one thought that he was bad, if you get what I mean. And there's also, in the first chapter I believe it is, there is references to the prodigal son, which is a Bible story. Basically tells the story of um, a man, he has two sons, and one of his sons is like, I want my inheritance now. Why can't I have my inheritance now? And so he's like, okay, I'll give you your inheritance now. He's really happy, he goes off, he spends it all, like, um, I believe it's like gambling and alcohol and all this kind of um, temptation stuff and all this um, sinful stuff and he ends up with nothing and is embarrassed to go back but eventually goes back and his father is so happy that he's home and he's like we must slaughter our plumpest calf and the other son who was there with him the whole time was like hang on wait one second I've been with you the whole time I've been here the whole time. I've been loyal to you the whole time. Why are you slaughtering the plumpest cow for this guy who took all your money and has done nothing for you? And the dad is basically like, well, you were always here. He made the mistake and came back and he learned from his mistake and that's why he gets to the biggest, the plumpest calf to be slaughtered. That's very, that's very, very brief. It's, it's a, it's a more <laughs> intense story. The second chapter is called Cain, which is obviously in reference to Cain and Abel, who were the sons, the twin sons, I believe, of Adam and Eve. So in the second chapter is when he meets Max Demian. I think I'm gonna go for Demian instead of Damien. I think it's Damien instead of Damien. Anyway, he meets Max Demian. Obviously, he is the namesake of the book, so obviously he is a kind of important character. He's very automatically, very cunning, charming, attractive. Now he does, um, explain his facial features and he does explain him and that although he is he's older than um, Emil Sinclair but he's not old but he doesn't carry himself or look like a young boy but when I say attractive I mean like something about um, Demian attracts Emil really like draws him in and Demian's basically explaining the story of Cain and Abel but in a different sense where he's kind of preferring Cain. Cain is the brother who ends up killing Abel um, and bears then the mark of Cain on his head, which the mark of Cain is very, very, very important in this book. So he kind of re-explains the story of Cain and Abel where Abel is the coward and Cain is the brave one. He helps get rid of Cromer. He helps get Cromer off of Sinclair's back and in part of it, Sinclair is like, he's a tempter, but I kind of like it because he was having nightmares about both of them. And when he was having nightmares about Cromer, um, they were terrifying and it was awful. And he was afraid that he was going to hurt somebody. And when he was having nightmares about Sinclair, he was still torturing him, but he was quite okay with it. And then I mentioned this before of the quote at the end of chapter two, which is directly in the BTS Blood, Sweat and Tears music video. But it was not Demian's world, nor was he suited to it. He too, though in a different way from Cromer, was a tempter, and moreover my link with the second evil world with which I never wanted to have anything more to do. For if one believed in the right of Cain and the wrong of Abel, then it followed that God had committed an error, that the God of the Bible was not the true and only God, but a false god and this idea does come up over and over and over again of the idea of the way we perceive religion to be the only right way and it's only right it's only good but if there's potentially mistakes then it is not right and the whole thing can be discredited the third chapter is called the thief and it is in reference to both of the thieves bless you it is in reference to both of the thieves that are crucified next to Jesus. So Jesus is in the center and there's a thief on either side of him. One of them repents and says, God, I'm so sorry. Um, I ask for forgiveness. Um, I'm sorry for my crimes. The other doesn't. Demian really, really changes perspectives of the Bible. So again, the way Demian really liked Cain over Abel he likes the thief that does not repent for his sins, 
over the thief that does. And the reason he prefers the thief that doesn't repent for his sins is because I, the way I see it is it's strengthening your convictions and it's, I did this, this is who I am, I'm sticking with it. It doesn't matter that he is being crucified for it, he did it and he is sticking with it. He is not faltering at the last minute. He is sticking with his convictions. And he also states that he believes that the thief that doesn't repent for his sins is a descendant of Cain. And there's really, really this idea, this recurring idea of conflicts between good and bad, God and the devil. It's Sinclair is terrified, terrified of the bad side but he's kind of becoming conflicted between the two because Demian is so convincing in his words. If you had to choose one of the two thieves today for a friend or consider which of the two you would prefer to trust, it certainly wouldn't be the sniveling convert. No. The other is the man and has real character. He despises a conversion which for a man in his position can only be a pretty speech and pursues his own way to the end. He does not forswear the devil, who must have aided and abetted him at the 11th hour. He has character, and there are only too few people of character in the Bible. Perhaps he was a descendant of Cain's. Don't you agree? That is a quote from Demian. Bless you! Missy, are you okay? Is it a bit dusty in here? I think I might need to hoover. The next chapter, chapter four, is called Beatrice. Now, there are a lot of characters that I feel like um, Sinclair fixates on and Sinclair puts a lot of his focus into people. Beatrice is a character who he puts a lot of focus into, but we never really get to know Beatrice well at all. It's this part where he separated himself from Demian, but he's still having these incredibly, incredibly dark thoughts. It's cynicism, gloomy, and self-deprecating. He comes across a new character called Beck, who he's really interested to listen to because he sees him having like real life experiences. He's still very young at this part, and this is where I kind of got confused because he starts drinking um, and he kind of falls into a uh, de depressive episode. Yeah, his new infatuation becomes Beatrice but he is subconsciously always thinking about Demian and accidentally draws Demian. Um, he can't escape from him. No matter where he goes, no matter what he does, he cannot escape Demian. The way I see it is that Demian is kind of embedded in his subconscious. And so even if he thinks he's getting away from him, he's not really. The next chapter, chapter five, is called The Bird Struggles Out of the Egg. And that is what the cover of this book is in reference to. So this top human head is a bird. It kind of looks like a bird. If you look really closely, you can see all the feathers. And then underneath it, it's a head with an egg. And it's basically man escaping. Um, the egg can be a symbol of the world and the top bit, the bird, can be a representative of a man's true self. And the bird that is always a reoccurring theme is the sparrowhawk, which I believe there is a really interesting reference to the sparrowhawk in the Blood, Sweat and Tears music video. As comes up a lot in the book, uh, there is continuing themes of good and bad, um, light and dark. He sends his painting to Demian and he gets a message back from Demian saying, the bird is struggling out of the egg, it read, the egg is the world, whoever wants to be born must first destroy the world, the bird is flying to God, the name of the God is called Abraxas. Now Abraxas is basically a god of good and evil, a kind of like a god and a devil mixed into the two and it, he's something that comes up a lot, he's a really really good um, representation of good and evil existing within one but technically speaking not good or evil just kind of even uh editing me coming in here just to say that i saw something interesting on wikipedia that said that the seven letters of abraxas could represent the seven classic planets and that made me think of bts because seven so he has these reoccurring dreams of a kiss and it mixes his feelings between ecstasy and horror and this is where I really see 
like a good contrast between good and evil um, light and darkness. One definite dream or fantasy which kept reoccurring struck me as particularly significant. This dream, the most important and enduring of my life, followed this pattern. I was on my way to my parents' home and over the main entrance the heraldic bird gleamed gold on an azure ground. My mother walked towards me but when I entered and she was about to kiss me it was no longer she but a form I had never set eyes on, tall and strong with a look of Max Demian and my painted portrait. Yet it was somehow different and despite the robust frame, very feminine. The form drew me to itself and enveloped me in a deep shudder embrace. My feelings were a mixture of ecstasy and horror. Ecstasy, good, horror, bad. The embrace was once an act of worship and crime. Again, worship, good, crime, bad. The form that embraced me had something about it of both my mother and my friend Demian. His mother is his attachment to the world of light and Demian is his link to the evil dark world. And also this embrace violated every sense of religious awe, yet it was bliss. So, it's conflicting emotions. Sometimes I awoke out of this dream with a feeling of ecstasy, sometimes in mortal fear and with a tortured conscience as if I had committed some terrible sin. So again, he can't even understand his emotions because he is stuck between the goodness and the light and the evil, dark world that he is conflicted between the two. He really, really, really feels bound to Demian. He feels like he is completely attached to him. And then he comes across an organist called, what is his name? I forget. Pistorius. I was always very confused about that name because it's a name that I've never ever heard of before. Pistorius is another person that he becomes very fixated on and he is very knowledgeable of Abraxas and he's kind of telling him all this information about the good and evil. Chapter six is called Jacob and the Angel. Um, he is now 18 years old and he has mixed feelings of pride and conceited and depressed and mortified. I didn't write too much on this chapter. I did get a very big sense of him seeing people as kind of a half rather than a whole person. He sees everybody as kind of half. Um, I think images of male and female come in. And he discusses the mark of Cain. Then for the first time, I was conscious of the mark of Cain on my forehead. It was only gradually that I became aware of this. My thoughts were all aimed in one direction, accusing myself and defending the stories. This idea comes about of new religion can't go on and it wasn't until the end that I think because I kept on seeing this idea of religion can't go on and I was so confused I think it's basically because religion is supposed to be all good and in this world what he's kind of discovering is there is no all good no bad there is no all good all bad and so religion itself is flawed in this world Chapter seven is called Ava. It's a very long chapter. It is a very intense chapter. Um, Ava is um, Max Demian's mother. So the image that he had drawn that he thought was Demian was actually his mother. And it's kind of like this click moment for him. He's like, this is what I've been searching for all this time. It has been his mother. Demian expresses to Sinclair that he had always seen his mark of Cain on his forehead and that's why he was so interested in getting to know Sinclair. Demian and his mother were both watching Sinclair and kind of looking out for him. There's also ideas of, you know, the world ending and kind of the big split in the world ending more or less. Demian's mother also bears the mark of Cain. So they all kind of bear it and that's why they're all connected. I think what's really, really interesting is both Demian and his mother don't match their perceptions. At least when um, Sinclair is describing them, they don't match their perceptions of what they should be. So Demian to Sinclair never matched the image of uh, a boy. He was always more mature. He always had a more striking imagery than a boy. He didn't carry himself as a young boy. And then with his mother, she doesn't carry herself or look like the mother of a grown man because 
gonna meet us now and then. The last chapter, chapter eight, is called The Beginning of the End. It's a chapter I got so confused on. It's a chapter I got so, so, so <laughs> confused on because especially there was only like six pages in it. And I was like, as I was starting, I was like, how is this going to end? Basically, war is breaking out. It's something that they've been kind of preparing for. Obviously, Demian and Sinclair get split up because they can't always be together in the middle of a war. And Sinclair gets injured. And as he's laying there, Demian is sitting next to him. I think what's really interesting to me is that he mentions, like, it's the last page. Franz Cromer has not come up all this time and Demian mentions him again and so to me it felt like all of this was destined from the very very start like none of this would have happened you cannot open doors it really 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 felt like this was something that was destined from the start and Demian says that um, his mother basically told him to pass on a kiss to uh, Sinclair and there is a kiss that is shared and um, Demian is basically saying even if I'm not with you all you have to do is look inside yourself and you'll know the answer and I'm always gonna be with you <laughs> I'm not going to lie I've read the book I've analyzed it and I'm still confused um, but it is very interesting. It's something that you can like really like look into Ooh. It's something That I feel like you could read it ten times and point out different things in it every single time you read it and um, I'm assuming that it is something if you know um, say Nam June was reading it and was like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna use this as inspiration for a song. So I think he probably read it a few times, not just once. I still think, I mentioned earlier that I think that Sinclair was a unreliable narrator. At the start, it was because he was young. I still feel like throughout the book, I'm not sure how reliable of a narrator he is. Um, he comes across very convincingly, but I still, I'm not sure how much of a reliable narrator I think he is. I'm not sure if we're supposed to trust everything that he says. So this very big idea of this, that, good, bad, good, bad, light, dark, male, female, angel, devil, god, devil, those kind of ideas, very opposite, split line, one, other, that's it. There's two reoccurring ideas that I would like to point out. Uh, one is fruit and one is the bird. The fruit I think can be a symbol, the fruit I think is an obvious symbol of sin and temptation, obviously because of the Garden of Eden, and I feel like that's not too much of a stretch because Cain and Abel are brought up in this a lot. In the music video, they all have apples on their plate. I see apples coming up a lot, and apple is obviously what Eve ate in the Garden of Eden. That got her kicked out of the Garden of Eden. It was temptation, it was sin. and they all have little apples sitting in front of them on their big long table. The bird is the sparrow hawk, and I think that might be an imagery for true self and identity. And I think it ties a lot in with Abraxas. A lot of Bible stories are brought up, so the prodigal son and Cain and Abel and then the crucifixion, but they are different perspectives, twists. It's basically saying you're always giving this, you're always given this as fact, you're always given this as the one true meaning. What if it's not that way? So basically, you're seeing it in this good way what if it's not all that way? There's this big idea of self and identity, but a lot of his self and identity comes from his connection with other people. And at first I thought maybe that wasn't a good thing, but then I thought maybe that's just how it's supposed to be. Maybe yourself doesn't necessarily always come from yourself, but from your connections with other people. In the music video, there is images of the bird. There is images of the fruit, the man and the bird coming together and the organ player. There are definitely, definitely, definitely 
connections, even if they seem so subtle and they kind of pass through in the music video very fast, um, there are definitely, definitely images that are connected with this book in the music video. Now I'm just gonna go and get up the lyrics. I'm not gonna go through the entire lyrics because this has already been a really, really long video, but I'm just gonna go through them and see if I can pick out something that I think is necessary. In the first verse, it is uh, Suga that is rapping this. I know well they're all yours, this spell that will punish me. I just think that's him becoming infatuated. And then Namjoon's verse is definitely a verse of temptation, just setting out that temptation is there and the desire for all these temptations. Peaches and cream, sweeter than sweet, chocolate cheeks and chocolate wings. But your wings are the devil's, there is a bitter next to your sweet. So it's these contrasting things, bitter and sweet, they are on. Idea of the devil temptation. No. This is in the second verse. Kiss me on the lips, a secret just between the two of us. I think that that is um, the idea of Femian and Sinclair, a secret, um, deeply poisoned by the jail of you, really, really feeling like he is just connected with Demian. It, it, he is the link to the evil world that he cannot escape. Um, I cannot worship anyone but you, and I knew the grail was poisoned, but I drank it anyway. In the bridge, oh, the bridge was so gorgeous. Oh, that song is just so mwah. I can't resist it anyway can't resist temptation. I can't even escape anymore. You are too sweet, too sweet, because you are too sweet. You are too tempting. I cannot escape you because you are too tempting. And that is the part in the music video where it stops and um, Namjoon says, he too was a tempter, he too was a link to the second, the evil world with which I no longer want to have anything to do. I really like how they paraphrase that. I really like how you can really tell that it comes from the book, but it has been altered so it fits best to this song this music video and that is everything that i want to say i've missed so much it is just i've read this book in two days and this is my third day of just melting all the information into me trying to see as much as i can um <laughs> I feel like you could do this for weeks and just find different stuff and just find different ways to explain everything. I'm like, yeah! I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to and post notifications. Remember, you say genius, I think Minyoongi. All my socials will be linked down below and I will see you when I see you. Okay, bye!